Probably the most interesting example of the type of control that a government can exert over the internet is China. Uh, there are other governments that also try to control internet usage. Uh, there are certain governments, places like North Korea, where they barely have the internet at all, and so the, the, you know, there's not necessarily a lot to control. But I think China is the most interesting example of a very sophisticated set of approaches to controlling, censoring, um, monitoring the internet use of people within the country, and a country that is very technologically advanced. So China is obviously not backwards um, uh, in terms of its approach to technology, but they have a lot of systems in place to try to control and monitor what their citizens do. So, so what do they do? Well, in certain cases, um, now well, maybe we should talk about first, how can they do this? Well, the way they can do this is the Chinese government controls a lot of the internet infrastructure in China. So in order to you know, get a connection from a, a computer, that's located in China, you know, maybe to a, to a site on the internet in the United States, I have to pass through an exit node that's operated uh, or at least controlled or has some oversight by the Chinese government. So, you know, the Chinese government has sort of, they, this is referred to the whole project, which involves a bunch of different technological components, is sometimes referred to as the golden shield. You can think of this as them building this sort of like very sophisticated uh, border uh, monitoring system for the internet. And again, I mean, to some degree, this is possible because the internet has a physical reality to it. I can't just somehow launch this connection directly to a server in the United States and bypass all infrastructure inside China. And because there is infrastructure inside China, that gives the government the ability to leverage that to control and to monitor things. So what do they do? Well, in certain cases, I try to go to a website. You know, I try to open up a connection on a website, and it's just blocked. Just boom. I mean, that's the simplest, um, obvious most um, so it's sort of clumsiest in a way, right? Because it's very obvious, right? I mean, you go to your web browser, you type in a particular address, and it just the page doesn't load. You know, whoops, okay. Um, so that's not particularly subtle, but it's also you know quite effective and it's very easy. Um, it's quite difficult to get around that. There are ways to get around it. I'll talk about it in a sec, but um, but that's sort of the, the the most obvious thing is to just block connections. But what else can they do? Well, in certain cases, um, let's say I perform a web search and the results are coming back. Uh, what the what the Chinese government will do is it'll actually modify those results in flight. So it takes search results from search engines like Google. It looks at the results. If there's stuff in there that they don't like, like I'm searching for things that I'm not supposed to be searching for, um, those results just get removed. And that actually is really sort of, uh, you know, that's really pernicious because I'm changing the, the way that the web looks to people. I mean, here at least I know what's happening. I try to go to a website, whoops, that's a bad website to go to. Um, if I run a search, for a particular topic and those results have been manipulated, I'm getting a very uh, different view of the internet than somebody else would. So you can imagine you know, someone who would be doing research on a topic in China, if that topic is sensitive to the Chinese government, might come to a completely different conclusion about the reality of the world that somebody would searching from a place where there's, there's less or no control over how those searches are done. Um, you know, there, there, are, there are stories, I mean, the, the details of this aren't entirely known, uh, but there's other things that they can do. In certain cases, if they want to monitor secure traffic, they will try to launch uh, man-in-the-middle attacks against uh, secure connections. There's been evidence that this has been done. So you try to go to a website, and it comes back with some sort of self-signed certificate, and, and you're not sure what to do, but maybe I still want to visit the website. And so now what's happening is, you know, the, the Chinese government has put a node on the path that's intercepting uh, and D. D and re-encrypting all the traffic so they can monitor it. Um, so part of it is control. There's also a monitoring component. So the, they're keeping records. Um, and they're, you know, the, this is like widely known that they keep records of the internet activity of their citizens. So overall, um, what effect does this have? Well, like I said, I mean, clearly people inside China uh, may come to a very distorted opinion or view about things because of the censorship that's being imposed. Um, this also probably has somewhat of a, you know, what we refer to as a chilling effect. If I know that uh, certain websites are off limits or certain topics are off limits, I'm not going to go online to find out more about them. That's something that we would do. I mean, you know, I can Google all sorts of things that might be sensitive, that might be, you know, I can use the internet to find out all about Edward Snowden, right? I mean, is the U.S. government happy about that? No. Can I do it? Yes. Um, 
So, you know, and so that's, you know, that's part of the and also I want to point out I can go and do a Google search for Edward Snowden and not worry that, you know, the black helicopters are going to show up at my house tonight. Um, and so that's a that's another issue. Um, now, there are ways around this. Um, you know, if you live in China, uh, people use proxies outside of China. People will use virtual private networks to encrypt traffic all the way from one end to another so that the government can't even tell what site I'm trying to use. Uh, in certain cases, the Tor network can also be used in China for the same reason, to try to sort of disguise or, or, or mask my internet activities. But to some degree, this is tough because, again, the government is a very powerful adversary. The government, you know, has great visibility into all the internet traffic in and out of the country. Um, and so some of those approaches, I mean, may work to some degree, um, but the Chinese government may still be aware of them and they may still have ways to, to monitor them that we're, we don't know about. Um, the other problem, of course, is that those approaches are, some, are to some degree today limited to technological sophisticates. So um, the average internet user in China isn't necessarily going to know how to create a VPN or you know, encrypt things in certain ways. Um, so anyway, so this is probably the, the, the most, um, you know, I, I think, troubling ongoing example of large scale uh, internet censorship, but it gives you a sense of what's possible. And it gives you a sense of how lucky we are to live in a place where these types of strictures, these types of this type of censorship, and this type of control is not being exercised.